Hi everybody, this is Brian James from Rhino3D.com and in this video I'll be giving you an overview of the Rhinoceros for Mac user interface. When you start a new file in Rhino, you'll have four default viewports. The perspective view can be rotated with a three button mouse using right mouse button click and drag. If you use command and right mouse button you can zoom in and out and shift and right mouse button will pan. In your orthographic viewports, right mouse button by itself will pan, and right mouse button and command will zoom. If you have a trackpad instead of a three button mouse, you can use two fingers to rotate, two fingers in command to zoom, or a pinch gesture, two fingers and shift to pan, and you can configure your OS X trackpad settings to utilize a three finger click and drag gesture if you want to use the trackpad exclusively. To maximize or minimize a viewport, double click on its name tab or use the names of the viewports above the default four. To return to the four default viewports, click this icon here. At the top of the interface, you have the toolbar and on the left and right side, you can click these icons to hide or show the sidebars. Grid Snap will allow you to snap to the graph or grid that you see in the viewports. This is also known as a construction plane. Ortho and Planar are constraints while modeling. Smart Track will utilize object snaps. The Gumball will be a manipulator object that controls translation, rotation, and scale for the current selection. And History will create associative relationships between geometry. These icons are popovers for object snaps, object properties, and layer information. In the right sidebar, you have panels for additional types of information, such as saved views, saved seaplanes, viewport properties, display information, and the Rhino help, among other tools. In the lower left corner, you have a popover for the command history. This will tell you everything you've done in this session of Rhino. To run a command in Rhino, you can click on an icon, and if an icon has a black arrow in its lower right corner, you can click and hold to show associated commands. You can also use drop-down menus to access commands in Rhino. Lastly, you can simply type a command name, and the command line will truncate based on the number of letters that you've typed so far. If you'd like to change the way Rhino looks or behaves, you have two options. You can change Rhino's preferences globally in the Rhinoceros drop-down menu, Preferences. And if you'd like to change the way Rhino's user interface looks, check out the Themes section. You can also change specific settings for this document, and that would be accessed through File drop-down menu, Settings. And that's a quick overview of the Rhinoceros for Mac user interface. Stay tuned for more tutorials on using Rhino for Mac, and thanks for watching.